Be firmly rooted in the contented state in which you know only that to be yours which is obtained in the course of the due performance of your own appropriate action. The traditional assumption is that once you realize the truth, you sit there cross-legged in supreme bliss. But this isn't reality. If you're a traditional yogi and you used to do meditation and you used to higher states of consciousness, then why not? You can get on with being a yogi and sit there in a higher state of consciousness. But if you're not a yogi, if you're an ordinary person and you're practicing yoga vasishta, you get on with things. You continue to get on with things. You get on with what's called here the appropriate action. If you're living within a particular social context, then there will be actions which you're expected to get on with. And you can do this and be firmly rooted in the contented state. You've gone beyond any kind of notion of ownership, but there is a course of action which you could say is yours, which you've decided to pursue and which you're getting on with. He is a man of self-conquest who rests in peace and contentment, performing whatever has to be performed and avoiding what should be avoided. And what should be avoided is self-forgetfulness, forgetting your true nature. That should be the natural state. That's the state which the wise one naturally rests in. His mind is a rest who enjoys observing or watching himself and is disinterested in external events and observations. This is the so-called witness consciousness. Although participating, although getting involved, there's no self-forgetfulness involved. You become like a witness. It's a condition you often experience when you're in a dream. You've got this sense of events going on. They seem to be quite absurd. But somehow you have to go along with them, you have to engage with them. Um, but there's still that sense of dissociation. Psychologically we might be taught to find that somewhat disturbing. But as long as you can play the game, it's not a problem. You play the game, but you know the truth. And the truth is the reality of your own consciousness and how everything arises within that consciousness. And here we can understand it as the witness consciousness. When one's awareness is thus firmly held within oneself, the mind abandons its usual restlessness and flows towards wisdom. This is an introspection. It's simply observing what's going on. And what's going on is actually what we'd normally describe as within the body. All the sensations that we experience, all the immediate experiences, everything which seems to be in our immediate vicinity as far as experience goes, we'd normally associate with the body. So whether it's sensations of body contact, sensations of mood, sensations of energy, of vibrancy, that's what's going on. So we're not interested in ideas of what's going on. And ideas of what is going on are normally related to ideas of the external world. But we're not caught up in that distinction. We're not caught up in ideas of external and internal. We are simply with what is going on. Observing what is going on without getting caught up in it all without becoming restless and in this way the mind flows towards wisdom. The wise man attains victory over the senses and does not drown in the waves of vasanas or mental conditioning. And these are our moods. These are our moods which colour our experience of the world. 
he sees the world as it is. Then the illusion of samsara or world appearance ceases, and with it all sorrow comes to an end. It's the conviction that the world is a permanent reality, which is samsara. You realize it's simply an appearance. It's of one nature, the way everything which happens in a dream is of the one nature of dream. Everything in the world is of the one nature. It's of the one nature of awareness, of consciousness. And when you realize and appreciate the nature of your own consciousness, then this is the end of samsara. It's the end of conviction in the belief, in the, in the concreteness of the physical world. And you realize it's of the nature of a mirage or a dream. And with it all sorrow comes to an end. And you can rest in this realization when one realizes that it is the pure consciousness alone which appears as this world, what is bondage and what is liberation. And this pure consciousness is beyond thought and it never becomes something that we can think about. It's what's doing the thinking, it's what's doing the conceiving, it's what's doing the cognizing. We can rest in it and then ideas of bondage and liberation become redundant. Dehydrated water does not flow. Uncaused experience does not create a psychological division. So we don't get caught up in our concepts. We've taken the hydration out of the water of all our concepts. So the attention no longer flows into them, no longer identifies with them, no longer gives them concrete reality. We no longer get caught up in diversity. Experience is like space which puts on the different forms of I and you etc. and which seems to create a diversity where none can arise. That which fills this space is pure consciousness besides which nothing exists. There's only this consciousness, its university.